A growing number of successfully treated oncology patients are finding they need a cardiologist. It's a whole new field, really, and we're also talking about how can oncologists and cardiologists better predict cardiac toxicity. So in the March 18th issue of Jack, there is a paper on FLIT3, which is a cytoprotective system in the heart and a potential therapeutic target. And accompanying that paper is an invited commentary written by my guest, Dr. Anna Barak, MD, PhD, who is the director of cardio, the cardio-oncology program at MedStar Washington Hospital Center in Washington, D.C. First off, what's the cardio-oncology program like at your facility? Well, cardio-oncology program is uh is really is an active clinic with an active research component, and I think that's where the paper coming comes into place, where we are trying to figure out is how do concomitant uh, heart conditions uh, affect patients who are undergoing cancer treatment, how we can predict in previously healthy patients from a cardiac side who is going to develop problems on cardiac uh, side while receiving cancer therapies and that's all happening in a very exciting time where a lot of cardiology and oncology therapies are on the rise. Right. So FLIT3 is a kinase and when we say a kinase uh, I think it's uh, for many of the practicing cardiologists it's not a common term. Kinase is a protein that gets activated by phosphorylation and can phosphorylate other proteins. So every single cell including cardiac myocytes and including tumor cell has a number of these kinases who sort of play around and control critical pathways within the cell that determine, determine whether the cell is going to die, whether it's going to live, proliferate, do everything that's needed. So in uh, tumor biology, the set of kinases is called kinome. So I use that sort of as a, as a little uh, word game. In tumor biology, cancer kinome has been extremely well exploited. So if you figure out which are the wrong kinases in a tumor cell that get activated and make tumor grow, you find that your kinase block it and tumor is not growing anymore. This is oversimplifying it, but that's sort of... The, the game. We know, and we've known for years, that many of these kinases are part of the normal, normal cellular homeostasis in a cardiomyocyte too, but we don't frequently know their detailed roles and what is it that they do in the heart. So uh, we, and I said, well, I'm not sure that we know that much of a heart kinome, if you, if you want to say. So what this paper, and I can go straight into it, what this paper, uh, what the Pfister and authors did, they took one of the common targets, so FLIT3 is a kinase that phosphorylates and participates in proliferation, and it's one of the important kinases in many of uh, deadly tumors, such as, myeloma, such as uh, leukemias, uh, and tumors that are, and tumors can be tested for that. So if a tumor has that particular activated pathway, it's known to be one of these most aggressive tumors that leads to death. So targeting that tumor has been very successful uh, in oncology. What the paper did, they said, okay, what does this molecule do in the heart? They took a different approach. They, they took activated molecules, so now not inhibited. They used a very so traditional model where they ligated the LAD, that's what com what's commonly done in the animal models for uh, cardiology literature. They say we are going to induce ischemic injury by tying down the LAD. And then they injected intramyocardially the activated uh, FLIT ligand, which is ligand is uh, the molecule that activates the FLIT kinase. So, and they showed in, in vitro and in, vi in, in vivo in this setting in a rat model that they, are gonna ha they had more survival and they argued that in the setting of injury, that this is an important pro-survival molecule. So, obviously, the first thing of a clinician is going to say, hey, this is important. Cardiomyocytes are very metabolically active. If we start shutting down this important pro-survival uh, molecule, our patients are going to have heart trouble. Well, there is a little bit of work that needs to be done before we can conclude that. <laughs> so... What, are, what is uh, available in the oncology uh, armamentarium in the literature, if you will? There is a lot of already targeted inhibitors. So uh, oncologists have moved like way with targeted therapies. There's a number of them. And many of them are multi-targeted kinases. In particular, there's sunitinib and serafinib, which are very well known by this time, used uh, targeting antibodies. They're not antibodies. They are 
tyrosine kinase inhibitors. A kinase is to go back are molecules that have some of the their structure is conserved. So you can create a molecule such as sunitinib that is going to target a number of kinases because they all sort of work in a similar way. So using those, among other kinases, these two uh, uh, mentioned drugs are going to inhibit FLT3 too. And indeed, we do have some of the cardiotoxicities, but it's not nowhere clear which exact pathway is that they are blocking that's detrimental to the heart. So a lot of work needs to be done in order to be, uh, better understand uh, how this uh, kinase could har harm the heart. And I do have to say is there is a completely different flip side how this can help cardiology in a tremendous way. So from the same literature, there is this molecule that's very well known, I think, to many cardiologists now. There is a cancer drug called uh, trastuzumab mm -hmm. that is very widely used for breast cancer. What was found out that it blocks one particular pathway that we learned hard way that it's important in the heart. But then there was almost, if you will, like a reverse translation. People said, well, if blocking this is detrimental to the heart, what if we activate it? And neuroregulin is a molecule that activates that pathway, which is now in phase three clinical trials for treatment of heart failure. So I think we can, this way, it's a little bit cumbersome and you can say a long way to come to the discovery, but I think we certainly, there is a lot of molecular targeting pathway coming from oncology and that's how we can learn. Well, it's an exciting pair of papers, the original article and then the invited commentary. Please go to the March 18th issue of Jack and read both papers for CardioSource World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.